three episodes in one week. Doofy, you're a machine. I better take a break after making episode 29 of the Doofy Doo Talk Through of Sheer and the Wanderer. This episode, I'm going to finish up the last four puzzles that Faye has for me. And it's a good chance to pause and summarize everything we've already learned before we move on to the meat and potatoes of Bufu's Cave. I might even make it to Bufu's Cave this episode, I hope so. Uh, I thought it was a good idea to take some time and uh, review if you're trying to learn something for the first time. So that's what I'll try to do. Alright, I lied last episode. You're going to see me throw guidance one more time. Although this is in a puzzle and you have to do it, so it doesn't count. You can trade guidance with an item in your inventory, as I showed last episode. You can also place guidance directly into a jar when they're underfoot, but... I really, really don't like to use that. I'm glad I will never use it again. <laughs> well, let's get started with the summary. The first 12 episodes, of course, I went through Table Mountain. Uh, what lessons did we learn? It's important to explore the entire floor. It's important to use your items and not hoard them. Hey, a kidney seed. A kidney seed makes the monster you hit with it behave like a kidney, so it will actually attack the other monsters. If you're fighting a monster with really powerful special abilities like a leveled up Wraith, it's a good idea to throw a kidney seed and then it'll only use its physical attack. If you eat a kidney seed though, you will behave like a kidney, so that is incredibly deadly. Now what can I do? <laughs> I'm the only... Oh, of course, I'll just let it follow me around the little creek and then I can make it. Uh, what other lessons did we learn? Use your items, don't hoard them like you would in a regular RPG. The most important lesson, learn from your mistakes. It's okay to die, as long as you learn. And you don't have to use the storehouse. There's no need to grind items or worry about leveling up. Again, this isn't a typical RPG in a roguelike. You can just relax, let yourself die. Try to make it through with whatever you find on the floor. Play it almost like uh, Super Mario Brothers, you know? You're gonna die, you're gonna go through the first floors again. And every time you go through, hopefully you'll make it a little bit farther until you beat the game. After beating Table Mountain, I asked why Sheer and the Wander was such an appealing game to me. And I said that really to understand it, we'd have to think about the four different reasons that people play video games. The first reason was for exploration, and I said that's a basic biological fact about humans. Everyone likes to explore, everyone's curious. What makes for good exploration? A vivid, sensory-rich environment to explore. Novelty, something new that you've never seen. Danger, you need some genuinely dangerous environment to explore. And a reward system that's actually meaningful, not just a bunch of doodads you collect that don't do anything, but rewards that actually affect the gameplay. Now, by modern game standards, Sheeran does not have a vivid environment to explore, but by roguelike standards, uh, it has a lot of personality. These graphics are actually pretty good for a roguelike. Hmm. Not sure how I'm going to get across here. Oh, I know. <laughs> this is the old diagonal knockback puzzle. I remember this one. I have to get him back here. Uh, I ran out of switching, didn't I? All right. <laughs> I'm going to have to actually... Uh, Quit and try this one again, but I remember how to do this puzzle. But yeah, personal bias aside, I understand that most gamers would not call Sheeran vivid or sensory rich. But when it comes to novelty, every run is unique. Every situation you run into could be unique, so it has a lot of novelty. It's extremely dangerous because there are meaningful losing conditions. And the reward system is excellent. You saw that time I <laughs> foolishly allowed the Roid Kitty to level up couple episodes ago, that one hiding jar actually saved me. If I didn't have that one item, uh, I would have been toast. So just one item, a single reward, a single thing you find in a monster house could actually turn the entire game around for you. The second reason we said that people play games was for a sense of control. Uh, and we said the three most important qualities of good control were a consistent, satisfying system of feedback. So anytime you have a common action, there needs to be some kind of quality feedback. Now that doesn't mean it has to be overwhelming. There doesn't have to be a giant explosion and lots of bright colors every time you do something. Uh, but like the jump sound in Mario, or the sound of the door in Metroid, 
or even just the sound of picking up a staff when you walk on top of it. You need feedback that communicates the effect that the player's actions are having on the game world. We also said that it is important to have the appropriate control scale, and then we were starting to get subjective when we talked about control scale. So personally, I prefer fine control, something that approaches one-to-one -one control. Every action I take in Shirin the Wanderer has an effect in the game world. Uh, it's not like I push a button one time and I see a long five-second canned animation of Shirin climbing up on top of the monster's head and then slashing it in the head and slicing off his head and throwing the head at another monster and doing a 10-hit combo. It's uh, much more restrained than that. And a lot of modern gamers prefer more broad controls where the controls are simplified and a single button press will cause a lot of things to happen on the screen. Uh, I personally don't, but again, just personal preference. And the third quality of good control was a sense of liberation over empowerment. So this was where I talked about compound verbs. There's a lot of different things you can do in Sheeran, and not only that, the things you can do combine in interesting ways. All right, got this shot all lined up. I'm gonna diagonally knock him backwards. Hopefully he's still standing there, yep. Hmm. That puzzle it was actually a little bit challenging, but it's so situational. I really don't like puzzles that, you know, they're not applicable in the regular game. The third reason we said people play games was for a feeling of accomplishment. And that was when we talked about just a sec. I want to see if I can confuse everyone in town. That would be hilarious. Oh, nothing happened. Can't even confuse little B. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go do some errands. I've only got one puzzle left, so I'm definitely going to finish it either this time or next episode. But, uh, yeah, I talked about the two paths that developers had to give their players a sense of accomplishment. The path of achievement was mainly time dependent. You just pump in your time. It was externally defined, just like a list of accomplishments you can give the player. And usually it didn't come with any meaningful losing conditions. If you failed to achieve a little item on the checklist, you know, you might lose 5, 10, 15 minutes of gameplay. In contrast with this, the path of competence is skill dependent. You can't just put in time and expect to get better. You actually have to think about what you're doing and improve your skills. It's individually defined. Uh, they're not giving you a big list of things you need to accomplish. You actually have to figure out what you need to learn to do better. And there are significant losing conditions. So you have a motivation to actually improve your skills. If you lose, you're going to lose a lot of progress or have to replay a large part of the game or wait a long time before you get to play again. All right, I thought Gaibara would open up the scroll cave, but uh, hmm, maybe I need to unlock Bufu's cave first. Last episode, I said you needed to beat Bufu's cave in the scroll cave before you could get to face final puzzle. That's not true. You just need to unlock them and go inside them once. But I am going to beat Bufu's cave and scroll cave. Hey, restaurant's super popular now. Sweet. Uh, before I go to Phase Final Puzzle, because one does not simply walk into Phase Final Puzzle. I am incredibly rusty as that rescue showed, so hopefully a little bit of serious play, or more serious play, will sharpen my skills to the point that I can actually uh, <laughs> get my completion percentage to Phase Final Puzzle back up. As I said, when I was at my peak, I could usually beat Phase Final Puzzle, I'd say, one in every eight attempts. But the way I'm playing now, I'd be lucky if I could get 1 in 20 runs. So, I'll run through Bufus Cave and Skrull Cave as kind of confidence builders. And by the time I'm done, I will be ready for the main event. Where was I? Oh yeah, the path of achievement and the path of competence. Sheeran, like a lot of games, actually uh, offers the gamer a choice of which one they want to do. If you want to, you can grind yourself a, an armor ward plus 30 and a katana plus 30 and just sort of brute force your way through the game. But if you really want to experience the best part of the game, face Final Puzzle, you're going to have to get to the path of competence. You're going to have to increase your skills because you just can't uh, plow your way through face Final Puzzle. You have to learn the game inside and out and then try to break the game as best you can. 
The fourth and final reason we talked about for people to play games was to satisfy their social needs. And we said there are basically four different types of gamers. Uh, the first type, explorers, the type that I generally am, are always searching for the truth. They're looking for knowledge. They're testing boundaries. They're always asking uh, what if questions. <laughs> this run is over. That's good. I didn't want to backtrack all the way anyway. If you like exploration, if that first reason people play games was the most important to you, then chances are that you are an explorer most of the time. And Shirin will satisfy your gaming needs very well, unless you really need high quality graphics. Alright, this is it. I'm going to finally finish all 50 of phase puzzles. Let's see what the last one is. I don't remember it. Hmm, but the name of the puzzle is Patience. So, hmm, I think... Oh, I just remembered how to do it. I should have left that mammal alive. You have to use the mammal as kind of a blocker to get in the way of the giant enemy crab so they can't get to you. So I will try it again, but I remember how to do this puzzle. The second type of gamer we talked about was the killer, or the winner. The person that wanted to have control over other gamers. They want to assert their dominance, they want to establish a hierarchy. These are the gamers that are playing to win. They're always asking, how will this help me to beat the other gamers? Because Sheeran is a single player game, obviously, it doesn't really satisfy the social needs of this type of gamer very well. Although it does sort of uh, obliquely. Uh oh, this was not the way to do this puzzle, was it? <laughs> hey, he missed. Oh, I'm not gonna get another chance. Yep, I'm going to die. <laughs> but Shirin does satisfy the social needs of killers slightly with the rescue system, but I'll get to that later. The third group of gamers we talked about was achievers. And achievers are always interested in accumulating wealth and resources. They're always asking, how can I amass more resources? They want a high score. They beat a game and then they move on to the next game and try to beat the next game. They get the bonus content. They get the achievements and trophies. Uh, they will check off the boxes in any list you give them. And Shirin's puzzle system, actually, I'm trying to check out the last box in these 50 puzzles, is actually appealing to achievers. The uh, extra super rare items you can get from rescuing a wanderer, like the Dragon Kill X, <laughs> brought out my inner achiever. Uh, you saw I showed off some of the items in my storehouse. The icons next to your name that showed the bonus dungeons, the adventure log. All that stuff appeals to achievers because they want respect from other gamers. They want to be admired. And the fourth and final group of gamers we talked about were the socializers. Socializers want agreement and harmony. They want to be liked. They want to be accepted. They're always asking uh, what's happening, what's going on. And basically, they're interested in the emotional aspects of human relationships. They want to know about romance, uh, gossip, trending topics, popularity. They like well-developed NPC characters that have personalities. They're almost like real people to socializers. And we said that, of course, the single-player game of Sheeran does not really appeal to socializers that much unless they talk about the game, you know, outside of the game. But that really applies to any game. But the rescue, hey, I forgot you get three blank scrolls when you finished all of Pei's puzzles. Sweet. Go put those in my storehouse. Blank scroll, you can write uh, any scroll you've already read in the main game, the name of it, you can write it on a blank scroll. So a blank scroll is really an anything scroll. And the most important scroll would be the scroll of removal, or it used to be called the genocide scroll in the old game. But I have not read that outside of Phase Puzzles yet, so I won't be able to write removal on the blank scroll until I do that. There's one more powerful scroll that I need to unlock that I'll talk about later. But yeah, I said the rescue feature is really the only social aspect of Sheeran that would satisfy socializers, their need to help other people. And uh, I demonstrated the rescue system by rescuing Lena from Phase Final Puzzle. You got a little bit of a sneak peek. And I think the rescue feature is a nice way to sum up the four reasons people play games because it really satisfies all four in some ways. 
Hmm, I thought maybe the stone dildonicus would be gone. But I guess it next run, next run probably it'll be unlocked. Because I've done all of the Bupu's Cave side quest, I think. Ah, I just have to make it back. Maybe I'll kill myself. <laughs> Start over. Ah, I can't believe we did it. I'm so happy. Yes, I do. You say that every time. But the rescue feature, when you do a rescue, you're going through the exact same dungeon that the person who died went through. So you know it's dangerous because they die doing it. And you know that there's going to be a monster house by their body. So that's really satisfying to explorers. It gives you a sense of accomplishment because you're going to get loot. There's going to be a monster house by their body. You can get a lot of rare loot from doing phase final puzzle rescues. And a lot of times the person requesting the rescue will tell potential rescuers about the run uh, in order to entice them to try it. They might say something like, oh, there's a cobra's blade on floor four. And an achiever hearing that will try that rescue to get that loot. You can also get rare gift items from Hoi for rescuing people. That also appeals to achievers. How do rescues appeal to killers? Well, it's kind of a loose connection, but when you rescue someone, uh, like when I rescued Lena, there is kind of a hierarchy established. You know, I am rescuing someone. I'm in a position of strength. Lena is actually a very skilled player of Sheeran. She's beaten Phase Final Puzzle multiple times. Usually she doesn't die on floor four. But because I'm the one rescuing her, uh, it kind of appeals to the killer in me, you know? It's establishing a sort of a hierarchy. You know, I am the more skilled player because I am coming to rescue you, and I will make it where you failed. So in that way, rescuing a wanderer satisfies that need gamers have for a sense of control. From now on, whenever we do a run through Table Mountain, it's important to stop by the restaurant and get a free meal. And it's important to be at maximum fullness, so that if you do get a meal that increases your fullness, uh, it doesn't just make you full, it actually increases your permanent stats. Huh, Gabarro still wants to tell me about the melding jar. I guess, hmm. Does he say anything different? Nope, it's the same message. I guess you do have to unlock Rufus Cave before he does anything else. And finally, social needs. The rescue system obviously satisfies your social needs as a gamer. It feels really good to help another wanderer out, especially if they go on to win the run for the first time. It just it feels awesome. Even if you don't get a Dragon Kill X. <laughs> I'm going to talk about that Dragon Kill X for the rest of the talk through. It's so beautiful. <laughs> All right, to summarize, exploration, control, accomplishment, and social needs. Those are the reasons people play games. And those are the reasons that I play Sheer and the Wanderer. That is where we have been. This episode's running a little bit long. So uh, I think I'm gonna stay and end it now. Where are we going? I don't know, but one thing's for sure. There's going to be a lot of dick jokes. I'll see you in Boopoo's Cave next time on Sheeran, the Wanderer. Sheeran, come with me for a minute. I want to talk to you. Excuse us, Faye. I just want to say one word to you. Just one word. Are you listening? Dragon Kill X. There's a great future in Dragon Kill X. Think about it. One does not simply walk into face on a puzzle.